Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Last week, we got a really big update for the Unify Network application that featured things like OSPF, Layer 3 ACLs for our switches, as well as being able to change our topology. Well, this week, we're getting a big update for our Unify Protect application, and that is Unify Protect application 3.0.22. The list isn't nearly as long as the Unify Network application upgrade, but this is a really cool one as it gives us facial recognition recognition as well as it changes the UI quite a bit. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of ubiquity content as well as on-site jobs. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com and we do have a Discord server. The link will be in the description below. So let's just get right into it and you could see that the dashboard is completely different. We now have our live view right on the main page, which I actually really, really like. And we could choose different views View. So I have a catio view and then I have my default view. We could also see some other things on the left hand side. We could see our storage capacity and our hard drives, how well they're doing. You could see that all my hard drives are healthy, our estimated time of recording and our earliest recording. It will also show us our camera capacity as well as all of the recent detections and the most active cameras. I like seeing this all at once when I log into Unify Protect. I think that's a really great update. It also shows us detections and how many detections were caught. So if we go over here and this is between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m., we have 144 detections. 33 of those are people and 111 are vehicles. And it will also show us our IoT devices. I have one UP Sense that's currently enabled and you can see that the door is open and the humidity and those things. Now, another minor change to the live view is the ability to view our doorbell package camera. We've never been able to do this before. So if I click on the live view of my doorbell, we could see that we have the package detection and we could switch between that. So I'm glad they actually brought that to us. One other thing with the doorbell, if we go to our unified devices and we go down to the chime, we could click on that and go over to settings. Now under the settings, we now see that we have sound and under the sound, we have repeat times. So this will be how many times the chime goes off. It usually was just one time, but now you could go up to six, which I think is really great. What they need to do next is now add custom chimes or at least different chime sounds. Now, one of the biggest updates to this is the ability to now do facial recognition. And this is with our AI series of cameras, except the ones that do 360. So AI 360 or the Theta 360, it won't capture faces. So I'm using currently the AI bullet and it's been working pretty well, but where I have my camera is probably not the best position. But we could see in this first thumbnail that it's marked Cody and the next one is Chantel. So in these images, it did detect who I was. When I didn't have my hat off in these other images, it didn't recognize who I was. But if we click on here, you could see every time that it found me, Cody. Now, if we go to this other one where it's unknown, I'll click on the person and then we could add a name and we could just call them unknown one. We could also add a description and then put them as a person of interest. If we have them as a person of interest, it's gonna send us a notification when our cameras pick that up, which I think is a great feature. Now you need to check with your local laws to see if you're able to do facial recognition or not. Now, one thing that I see coming out in the future is a new AI doorbell. I think that would be really great to capture faces if people are coming up and we may or may not see that soon. Another great feature that they've added is the ability to do multi-camera playback. You can only do this locally, so you have to go to the local IP address. And when we're in playback, you could see here, multi-camera playback, we click it and we'll select the cameras that we want to view. Now that we have the cameras that we want to view up, we could look back through previous recordings and you could see if I'm scrolling back, now we have Chantel's car go into the garage and you could see other things that are happening on all four of these cameras at once. Now, another big part of this update is the ability to archive our footage to our Google Drive account. The one downfall of this though is that it's manual. So we would have to go in, select the footage to push to our Google Drive and you could find that under system and then Google Drive account and you just need to link it. But I'll show you how we could push it out to the drive. To do this, all we need to do is click on playback and then under playback we have this download button which we've always had just to download clips but you could now see that it says video archiving so I'm going to click on it and we could either download it that would be to our local machine or we could archive it 
and we could switch the times. We'll just choose a time from 7.07 .07 a.m. to what, 7.06 a.m. and we'll click on archive. Now what this is doing is it's pushing it to our Google Drive account. Now within my Google Drive, you could see it created its own folder and that's called Unify. If I double click on there, we're gonna see Unify Protect 2024-0320 and we could click on it again. And I have two clips that are saved in there. The one that we just pushed up was this one right here. And if we click on it, it will bring up the clip of what I wanted downloaded and archived. Like I said, this does need to be automated. I can't see myself going in here and then archiving footage. We needed to be able to push out something like smart detections or maybe the suspicious person or smart vehicle detections. Let me know what you guys think about the video archiving being manual. Now, the last few things that I'm gonna to touch on are very minor changes, but if we go under our settings and then go to system, we could see under smart detections where we could turn off facial recognition as well as the license plate recognition. And we have our heat map that we could turn on and off. Another thing that they've added is a mode just for live viewing only. So if we go into the Unify OS and then we go to admins and users, we could make a new live view only. So we'll click on this Mac Telecom account and you're going to see that I have loaded credentials and I'm a super admin right now. But if we uncheck use a predefined role and go to protect, we could do view only. And this might be good for people like at a security guard station or employees that you just wanna view the cameras but no past recordings. And that's gonna be it for this video on Unify Protect application 3.0.22. And there was quite a bit jammed in there with some really great new features. Now, like I said about the video archiving, I'm not a huge fan of the manual way that we have to do it. I'd like to see that automated based on smart detections if we could. The facial recognition is really cool and I am probably switching out all my cameras to the AI pros so that I could use that feature and hopefully we do see an AI doorbell camera let me know down in the comments below what you think of this update if you like this video hit the thumbs up button if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon all right thanks